Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Genevieve. I'm 25 years old and I'm a mental health and eating disorder advocate. Before anyone mentions it, these two things, scratches in the wall are really annoying me, but we're all about living in the uncomfortable and, and challenging ourselves. So I'm just gonna let them be and they're just gonna ponder. And now that I've pointed them out, they're probably gonna really annoy you too. <laughs> So in January, it marked 10 years since I'd been admitted to Starship Children's Hospital Medically Unstable with Anorexia Nervosa. And today I'm really stoked to share with you or excited to share with you 10 things, 10 things. My dog just came in and opened the door. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. 10 things that I've learned over the last 10 years that I hope will really help you through your journey. So the first one is that I had to prioritize recovery. Recovery had to come first. Recovery had to be my main focus. It had to be what I was working on every single day. For me, that meant being pulled out of sports, quitting extracurricular activities. I was taken out and away from everything. Yes, I got mad. My parents enforced this. They didn't let me do anything extra because they wanted me to get better. And they often reminded me that if I wasn't alive, I wouldn't be able to do these things anyway. So recovery had to come first. But I think it was also, um, were also gave me more reasons to recover, more reasons to fight to get better. So recovery is a choice every single day. You have to prioritize recovery. I found that anything that got in the way, my eating disorder used as an excuse to keep me in its grip. Number two, thoughts are not reality. So for a bit of context, I struggled with anorexia nervosa and obsessive compulsive disorder. So I was constantly being thrown these lies. At the time, it was hard to see that they were lies. Now I know very well that they were all lies. My eating disorder was never satisfied. My OCD was never satisfied. Nothing was ever enough. I had to learn that thoughts weren't reality. Yes, I was feeling these things. It was uncomfortable. It was awful. I felt emotional. I felt sad. I felt fatigued. I felt down. I'd have these thoughts of terrible things happening to my family if I didn't engage in these behaviors. But I had to learn that those were just thoughts. They were not reality. And I did that through exposure therapy and lots of intense therapy with my psychologist, which I really recommend getting a team on board to support you through that process. It was hard, but it involved me challenging these thoughts head on. If I was told to do something, I would try and do the opposite. Didn't work every time, but it did work sometimes and that was me fighting. Number three, nothing is ever enough for your eating disorder. I cannot tell you this anymore. Honestly, no number is low enough, no way you look is good enough, no amount of food is good enough, nothing, nothing is ever going to please your eating disorder. There is a quality of love in it is you cannot trust something that is trying to kill you and learning this was really hard but it was so important. You give your eating disorder an inch, it takes a mile, nothing is ever enough for it. Yes, it will feed you lies. It will tell you if you do this, this, and this, then it will lessen the slack or lessen the load. If you do this, this, or this, then you'll be a little bit happier. It is not true. Your eating disorder is lying to you. Number four, anxiety is something that I struggled with from the age of about 10 years old. And it was crippling. It was awful. It meant that I was up for hours at night screaming, fearing for my life. Anxiety was involved in both my OCD and my eating disorder as well. It was kind of the core, the root of it all. Learning that anxiety was just a feeling, an awful feeling. Please, I'm not here to invalidate how it's feeling because I know how awful and how real and uncomfortable that feeling is. Number five, life is a precious gift. I met some incredible people throughout my journey. I often talk about how I wouldn't change what I went through because there's amazing people in my life that wouldn't have been in it otherwise. There are two people that really stand out to me and they hold a very special place in my heart. One of them is still a very close family friend of mine and one of them lost her battle to her illness when she was 16 years old. These two people always, always had a smile on their face. Every day they woke up and they fought and they gave life everything they had. And they really taught me how precious life was and that I was in this position where I had an illness that I could recover from. And so not only did I need to do it for myself, I needed to do it for them too. Life is such a precious gift. We get one of these, please make the most of it. 
Number six, build a support network. I think when we talk about support networks, often that can seem like it needs to be family or friends that you're really close with. It doesn't. Just having someone or some people around you to support you through your journey is so helpful. That might be the school counselor, that might be the university lecturer, that might be the librarian. Whoever it is, you need people on your team. It makes such a big difference. You need those people there that encourage you and inspire you and fight alongside you and also hold that hope for you when you're struggling to hold that yourself. Number seven, be kind. I've learned throughout my journey that many people are fighting many battles. I think everyone goes through something and everyone's fighting something that we don't even know about a lot of the time. And so being kind to everyone you meet and thinking the best of people, assuming the best in people, you know, if someone beeps at you while they're driving down the road, maybe they're just having a really stressful day. I try and assume the best in people, their intentions, their behaviors, what they say, who they are. Be kind you do not know what people are going through i walk down the street differently and i look around and you know i think about the man crossing crossing the road at the lights you know he could be having the worst day of his life he could be having the best day of his life we do not know what people are going through so always be kind and smile a smile can make someone's day it's so simple yet so effective number eight there's no shame in fighting mental illness. I spent so much of my life feeling so ashamed for what I was going through. I was embarrassed. I thought I'd never get in a relationship, that I'd never get a job, that people would always think of me as a girl that had OCD and an eating disorder. Shame really stopped me from so many things. It made me feel less than myself. It made me feel awful about myself. And learning and reminding myself that what I was going through was not a choice. I did not choose to be unwell and that actually Fighting mental illness is something to be bloody proud of because it's so freaking, excuse my French, but it's so, so hard. You do not need to be ashamed for fighting mental illness. It's very real. It's out of our control. We do not choose it off a shelf. We are handed these cards. We are strong and we fight it. And that is something to be so, so proud of. Number nine, your eating disorder is not your friend. It may convince you it's on your side, it may convince you that it's giving you control, that if you lose it, your world's gonna fall apart. It is lying to you. Again, you cannot trust something that is trying to kill you. Your eating disorder will do anything it can to keep its grip on you, but it's not your friend. You don't need it. Nothing good comes from it. Number 10 is something I wish someone had told me when I was unwell, and that is that recovery is possible. I know when you're fighting mental illness or you're fighting an eating disorder, whatever you may be going through, it is so hard to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. But please believe me that you can fight for a life free from your eating disorder. I am proof. It used to take up so much of my energy, so much of my time, so much of my thinking. You have to fight. You have to choose recovery every day. You are brave. You are strong. You are so much stronger than that voice inside of your head. Start challenging it. Start fighting it head on and know that life free from your eating disorder and recovery is so, so possible. So guys, I hope you found that helpful. Those are 10 things that I've learned over the last 10 years. Um, I'm really excited that I got to share those with you because they are really special to me. They're actually up on my Instagram highlights if you want to check them out or screenshot them or read them or go through them again. I'm so glad that you're here, that you're watching this video, that you're here today, that you're still fighting and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. See you later.